The anti-vaccination attitude isn't a new one, but it's a relevant discussion to clear up right now. Besides the political undertones, dividing people over the COVID-19 vaccine, there's also been a lot of bad press to navigate. Here are myths about the COVID-19 vaccine you should stop believing. COVID-19 deaths are less common in young adults than they are in older people and people with underlying medical conditions. As of mid-February, according to the Heritage Foundation, analyzing data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, roughly 93% of COVID-19 deaths have occurred in people over the age of 55, while only 0.2% are under the age of 25. But that doesn't mean young people are immune or that they can't spread the virus around to others. Most doctors agree, if you're young and healthy, you should still plan to get the shot when it's your turn. That's because even rare complications can still happen. But more importantly, young people can still pass COVID-19 along to others. In fact, according to Johns Hopkins Medicine, people under the age of 30 account for more than 20% of all COVID-19 cases. And there's a correlation between spikes in cases in this age group and subsequent spikes in older groups, which seems to suggest that young people are picking up the virus and then passing it on to older family members. If you've already had COVID-19 and have natural immunity, why would you also need vaccine immunity? The answer to that question is complicated. For starters, whether you've contracted COVID-19 before or not, there's really no reason not to get the vaccine because you're not any more likely to experience negative side effects if you have naturally acquired antibodies. But it's probably also true that the immunity you get from the vaccine may actually be better at preventing future disease. According to CNN, there have been cases of people becoming reinfected with COVID-19 after they've recovered, so natural immunity isn't perfect. Vaccines, on the other hand, can be designed to prompt a stronger immune response, so the antibodies you produce in response to a vaccine may actually do a better job of protecting you than the antibodies you produce in response to natural infection. I just decided I'm not going to do it. I'm a guinea pig if that's the case. Considering the incredible speed at which the vaccines for COVID-19 were developed, it may seem like the vaccines were rushed into production, but they've actually been in development for decades. That's because the virus that causes COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2, is closely related to the virus that causes SARS, known as SARS-CoV, which the world has known about since 2002. According to a paper published in the Journal of Biomedical Science, the SARS outbreak of 2002 and the MERS outbreak that followed a decade later prompted scientists to begin developing a vaccine that worked against the distinctive spike proteins that are unique to coronaviruses. So a lot of the work that was needed to complete a COVID-19 vaccine had already been done. And the mRNA technology, which both the Pfizer-BioNTech and Moderna vaccines use, is not exactly a new thing either. According to the CDC, scientists have been experimenting with mRNA vaccines for decades, which means that even though the vaccines are relatively new to the public, years' worth of research has already gone into how to safely develop them within the scientific community. In other words, while the virus itself may be new, scientists did not have to start from scratch to come up with vaccines for it. A typical vaccine being developed takes more than a decade to get to market. That's not because vaccine development takes a long time, it's because getting through the regulatory process takes a long time. But there's a perception that development takes a long time because of all the safety testing, which naturally has led to a perception that the fast-tracked COVID-19 vaccine must have undergone less safety testing than what's typical. According to the New York Times, all of the COVID-19 vaccines, including the more than 70 different vaccines that are still in clinical trials, undergo a rigorous safety testing process, beginning with brief clinical testing on animals. When that's complete, the vaccine enters phase one trials in a small number of humans. During phase two, researchers give the vaccine to a few hundred people before moving into phase three, where thousands of volunteers receive the vaccine. All the COVID-19 vaccines that are currently available have undergone all phases of safety testing, and safety monitoring is still ongoing. The vaccine did move through the process quickly, but that's only because it didn't have to wade through as much bureaucracy as other vaccines. All vaccines can have side effects. If you get a COVID-19 shot, you can expect to have a sore arm or, less commonly, develop a short-lived fever and some other mild side effects like headache, fatigue, and body aches. And the side effects may be worse following the second shot. 
But that's not because you're becoming ill with COVID-19, but rather because your body's immune system is ramping up. The rumor that the vaccine's side effects happen 50 times more often than side effects from the flu vaccine came from a single article that was widely shared on Facebook, but was eventually flagged for misinformation. Just go to Facebook and, and you'll get bombarded with the people thinking that the vaccine is going to kill them. This claim is based on data obtained from a federal reporting system that records adverse reactions. Because COVID-19 vaccines are still being monitored as a part of the safety testing process, many more adverse reactions end up in that database compared to those that may occur after other vaccines. In other words, people are a lot less likely to report side effects from a flu vaccine than they are from a COVID-19 vaccine. And that makes it look like the COVID-19 vaccine causes more side effects than it actually does. This particular myth, it turns out, was a misinterpretation of statistics. According to Reuters, social media rumors say that a vaccine with 90% efficacy would be pointless against a virus with a survival rate of 99%. But even if these numbers were true, this isn't the right way to compare them. A 90% efficacy rate for a vaccine does not mean 10% of those who receive the COVID-19 vaccine will die from the disease. It means 10% of those who receive the vaccine will still be vulnerable to getting the virus, but the vaccine can still help prevent the people who do get sick from requiring hospitalization. That 99% survival rate number for COVID-19 isn't accurate either. Globally, the case fatality rate is more like 2%, which doesn't seem so awful until you consider just how contagious COVID-19 is. So a low overall fatality rate is no reason to discount the value of the vaccine. Here's a quick fact check for you. None of the vaccines against COVID-19 contain microchips. Unsurprisingly, this is a rumor someone made up to discredit the vaccine and the people who promote it. It has no basis in fact, and if you want to make sure the government isn't tracking you, getting rid of your cell phone is a much better strategy than shunning a life-saving vaccine. The vaccines we're more familiar with, like the MMR and chickenpox vaccines, contain what's called a live attenuated virus, which is basically just a weakened version of the virus they're aiming to inoculate you against. These vaccines can cause the recipient to develop mild symptoms of the disease, but they rarely make anyone genuinely ill. There are also vaccines, like the one for rabies, that are inactivated. These also contain a virus, but it's not live. Still, it's reasonable for people to assume that COVID-19 vaccines work the same way. However, the COVID-19 vaccine is a completely different technology. Both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines are mRNA vaccines, and they contain no virus at all. Instead, the vaccine teaches your body how to produce the COVID-19 virus's distinctive spike proteins, which are the structures the virus uses to latch onto and enter the cells in your body. Then your immune system learns to build antibodies against the protein. To build immunity, your body doesn't even need to encounter the virus itself, which means there is no way you can get COVID-19 from the vaccine. mRNA is not a kind of DNA. It's actually an important component of a three-part system. The DNA contains the genetic instructions for building proteins. The ribosomes actually build the proteins, but the mRNA is the guy who carries the instructions from the DNA to the ribosomes, so the ribosomes know what to do. Still, anytime you hear the word genetic, it can have some scary connotations, so it's easy to see why some people think the COVID-19 vaccine might actually do scary things to your DNA. According to Health Feedback, the mRNA contained in the COVID-19 vaccine vaccine never goes anywhere near your cell's DNA. It's only there to provide the instructions on how to make the spike protein. After your cells make the protein, they actually destroy the instructions, so you don't even have to worry that your out-of-print spike protein manual will be floating around in your body forever. After that process, the protein itself gets sent to the surface of your cells, where your immune system finds it and starts creating antibodies, thus generating immunity. It's safe to say we've all grown tired of our most popular pandemic fashion accessory, the face mask. Unfortunately though, you don't get to tear it off, toss it in the nearest bonfire, and then hug a stranger moments after you've gotten your COVID-19 shot. According to NPR, you won't even have 50% immunity until a few weeks after your first shot, and you won't reach that coveted 95% immunity until a week after your second shot. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention considers people to be fully vaccinated two weeks after their second dose the Moderna or Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine, or two weeks after the single-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine. 
The vaccine will help slow down the pandemic, and eventually, it will be over. But the vaccine alone can't stop COVID-19. According to the Mayo Clinic, we can only achieve herd immunity when 70% of the population has antibodies against the disease. When you consider that roughly 30% of Americans say they aren't planning to get the vaccine, that means we have to work really hard to make sure that every single person who does plan to get the vaccine can do so. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more health digest videos about the latest in medical science are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.